Welcome to episode 4 of the introduction to Adobe Premiere Rush for iPad. My name is Jess, and in this tutorial we are going to cover editing the color of your clips, changing clip speed, and transforming clip properties. Let's get started. You can adjust your clip's coloring in a few different ways. You can apply a built-in color preset, manually adjust the color controls, or use a combination of the two. Let's start with presets. Select a clip in the timeline, open the color panel, and tap on the presets until you find a look you like. You can adjust the intensity of the preset using the intensity slider at the bottom of the color panel. Sliding to the left will lessen the effect, while sliding to the right will increase it. If you want to compare the edit to the original clip, you can tap on the toggle button at the top of the color panel to turn the edits on and off. To further edit the color properties, tap on the Edit tab at the top left of the color panel. Adjust the different color controls to achieve the effects you want. The basic adjustments you can make are as follows. Exposure allows you to adjust how light or dark your clip is. Adjusting the contrast allows you to mute the tones of the clip or to make it more vivid. For highlights, you are adjusting the brightness of the light areas in the clip, and for shadows, you are adjusting the darkness of the darker areas in the clip. For temperature, you are fine-tuning the white balance by moving the slider to the left to make the video appear cooler, and to the right for a warmer colors. For tint, you are fine-tuning the white balance by moving the slider to the left to add a green tint, and to the right to add a magenta tint. Adjusting the vibrance increases the intensity of the more muted colors in the clip with less effect on the higher saturated colors. And finally, saturation, which adjusts the saturation of all colors in the clip equally from zero, which gives you a monochrome or black and white look, to 200, which is double the saturation. The advanced adjustments include faded film, which allows you to apply a faded film effect to the clip. With sharpening, you can adjust the edge definition to create either a sharper looking clip or adding a blur effect. The vignette function allows you to adjust the amount of lightening or darkening along the edges of an image and to define the edge of the vignette, also known as feathering. A smaller value creates a harder, sharper edge, whereas a larger value indicates a softer, thicker edge. To apply the color changes to all of the clips in your video, click the Apply to All button. If you don't like the changes you've made, you can either select the Undo button until you are back to the look you like, or tap the Reset button to go back to the original clip with no color edits applied. Love the way your edit looks and want to use it again in the future? You can create your own presets by tapping the three dots next to the toggle button, then tapping Create Preset. Give your preset a name and tap Save. To find your custom presets in the future, go back to the Presets tab and tap where it says Your Presets. Your custom presets will be available here for use in any new videos you create in the future. Next up, let's take a look at changing our clip speed. This is useful for adding slow motion effects or speeding up a longer clip of B-roll. Select the clip you want to adjust and tap the speed button on the right side of your screen. Move the range speed slider right to increase the playback speed of a clip and move it to the left to slow it down. As you move the slider, you will notice the clip duration changes. A sped up clip becomes shorter in the timeline and a slowed down clip becomes longer. If the clip contains audio, playing the clip more slowly lowers the pitch of the audio, and playing the clip faster will raise the pitch. To preserve the original pitch on clips with audio, the Maintain Audio Pitch checkbox in the speed panel will be enabled by default. If you don't want to preserve the pitch, tap on this checkbox to disable it. If you don't need the audio track, for example when using B-roll, you can mute the clip and add background music instead. We will touch more on audio tracks in our next video. To speed up or slow down only a portion of the clip, set the start and end points to select a specific range. You can set the start and end points using the range slider in the speed panel, or by using the blue range handles on the clip in the timeline. If you are unsure of the clip speed that you want, you can manually edit the clip duration to set a specific duration for your clip and let Premiere Rush determine the right speed changes to make for you, based on that duration. To edit the clip duration, tap here, type in your changes, and tap the check mark. If you don't like changes you've made, you can either select the undo button until you are back to a speed you like, 
or tap the reset button to reset the range section to the default speed. The final topic for this video is the transform function. You can modify the appearance of your clip by cropping, rotating, or scaling it. To make these types of adjustments, select the clip in the timeline and open the crop and rotate panel. The adjustment settings are grouped into basic and advanced controls. Premiere Rush automatically fills the frame when the aspect ratio of imported media does not match that of your other clips. The fill option adjusts the frame to scale height. You can manually change this to fit, which will adjust the frame to scale width instead. The basic controls allow you to adjust the horizontal and vertical position of the frame, rotate the frame, and to change the opacity of your clips. You can also flip the frame horizontally and vertically. The advanced transform controls allow you to crop the clip's frame from the top, bottom, and left and right sides, and you can also apply edge feathering. So that's it for this tutorial on the basics of color editing, adjusting clip speed, and transforming clip properties in Adobe Premiere Rush for iPad. In the next episode, we will cover adding voiceovers and soundtracks and the basic audio controls. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.